Hello and welcome to Microsoft Excel 2010 using the VLOOKUP function brought to you by Shift Key Solutions and I am Eric Ripley. This video tutorial has been created to support the custom Excel advanced training class that we did with our friends at Kaiser Permanente. So if we take a look at our worksheet here we can see that we have a Georgia Sports Company order form. This is where a cashier or salesperson will take a customer's information to include a shipping method. After entering a shipping method, it'll automatically return a shipping code. We don't have that formula in there yet, but we'll end up creating that in a later video. So far, we've created a drop down list here for our description. So if I click this drop down list, I can see a list of items to choose from. For that matter, we created this in a method where we have to choose from that list. For example, if I put in pants and press enter, I get my dialog box here telling me you must select from the list of items shown. So I'll click cancel, click my drop down here and choose team shirt. Now that's great by itself, but boy, wouldn't it be neat if once I chose team shirt, it would automatically populate the code it would automatically populate the weight and the price. That would be really great. So let's talk about that. In order to do that, we're going to have to create a VLOOKUP for each of these. So we're going to start with the code column. What I have done previously is I created some name ranges. If I come up to my name box and click my drop down arrow, I can see all the different name ranges that I've created before. One of these is called catalog. So if I click this, I can see that this is the area or the table array in which I've created a name range for. That'll make for creating functions a little bit easier and a little more fluid. So if I come back down to my code, I'm gonna put in my VLOOKUP. I'll go equals VLOOKUP. And once I see that my function is right here in my list and it's already selected, I'm gonna press tab and it accepts that function and puts it in the nice capitalization and open parentheses. Now the first area I want to fill in is the VLOOKUP value. What do I want to look up or reference, cross-reference? So I'm going to indicate cell A25 and then I'm going to do comma. Now with it being bold it tells me this is the next area I need to populate in my formula. What table array? Well remember I gave it a name range called catalog so I'm going to type in catalog and as I type you can see that it automatically populates right here. So I just press tab at this point and it gives me that name. I'm going to do comma and then it asks for which column index number do I want. Well if I look up here this is the area that I'm pulling from and when it says column index it starts from left to right going one, two, three, four. So if I look and I want to identify that I'm looking for the code, which column is that in? That's right, it's column two. So I'm going to put in two and then comma. And to be very specific in my formula, I want to have an exact match. So I need to type in false here and then press tab. There's my formula. So if I look, just to verify, I always, with each step, and each formula I create, I always verify my actions. So I have team shirt code 3333. If I come up here and look in my table array or my table, team shirt, indeed it is code 3333. Great. So now let's do the same thing or the same formula for weight. It's going to be equals V lookup. I'm going to look up A25, comma, the table array is catalog. Now in this case, the column index is not column two because that's code. It'll be column four for the weight. Again, exact match. There it is. Now the price equals V lookup. I'm going to look up A25. The table array is catalog. The column index for price, let's take a look, it's one, two, three, column three. So I'll type in three of an exact match. There we have it. So if I look at my formula here, it looks pretty good, right? So let's select these 
and I'm going to fill these down oh boy what are these NAs NAs well pound NA means value not available value not available because this cell is blank so if I click in this cell here and choose a different item now it'll populate for me that's pretty neat how it just pops up there but do I really want to give something like this to an end user so they can try and make sense of this this NA NA stuff is just it's unkept and unsightly so let me show you a quick little nested function that we can put in our formulas here that'll get rid of that so let me go back to my first formula here for code and I'm gonna place my insertion point in my formula bar so that it's blinking at the beginning of my formula but after the equal sign in this case I'm gonna type in if error there it is I'm gonna press tab it accepts and formats that function for me now from here I'm not gonna change any of the formula other than the very end so I'm gonna press the end key and takes my insertion point to the end I'm gonna type comma and then quotations quotations so there's nothing there and then I'm gonna close the parentheses and that's how my formula is gonna look now I'm gonna press my enter check mark here and I can see that my my formula nothing's really changed in there well so that I can verify that it's actually taken effect I'm gonna fill this formula down there it is now I can see that if there's an error and that's what my formula is saying if there's an error return nothing and that's what indicated by the end of this formula return nothing so it makes it nice and clean and well kept so if I come to this cell here under weight and modify that formula to include the if error again I'm gonna press end to go to the very end and then do comma quotations quotations and then close parentheses it's that simple I'll go over and do that same thing for price if error end comma quotation quotation close parentheses it's that easy now from here I'll grab these this range here and then I'm gonna fill this down let's see if it works oh nice that's so much better so if I click my list here and choose another item oh, that populates nicely oh boy I'm making for some nice automation here and what can come from this what's the natural consequence from creating something like this yes that's right productivity increased productivity all right well that's this formula let me finish this last one here for weight in pounds that's gonna be a simple formula that's gonna be equals C25 the weight itself times D25 there's nothing there yet but we'll put something in there divided by uh, let's see what are we measuring here what ounces so how many ounces ounces are in a pound yeah that's right 16 16 ounces so I'm gonna take the 16 divided into the quantity and come up with the total so I'm gonna click my enter check mark now that's zero right now so let me just test it out I'll put 10 here for example there it is I have two ounce items and 10 of them that'll equal in pounds 1.25 or one and a quarter pounds pretty simple well, thanks for joining me. I hope this was helpful. And if you didn't know how to do this before, well, now you know. And I strongly encourage you to share this knowledge with anyone who might need help with it. Thanks for joining me, and don't forget to comment.